normal heart is conically shaped with an upper atrial chamber for filling and lower ventricular chamber for ejection. Oxygen poor blue blood is pumped to the lungs to collect oxygen and oxygen rich red blood is then pumped to the body. The heart's conical shape has been observed for many years as in this report from the 1700s. The outside shape of the heart is easily observed, but the internal structure is only suspected and thought to contain clockwise and counterclockwise spiral forms within a double helix. Anatomy is destiny, since it determines the form-function relationship. Surface image examination of the heart shows that it constricts to eject and dilates to fill. These actions are shown on magnetic resonance recordings where the heart narrows during ejection and widens as it lengthens. A different picture emerges when we look at the heart during open heart surgery. We see a twisting motion of the heart as it constricts to eject, followed by an untwisting movement as it dilates to fill. Consequently, we have discovered a difference between the conventionally taught concept of constriction and dilation and the reality of the natural twisting and untwisting motions. This apparent mystery is explained by understanding the underlying architecture of the heart. Unraveling the three-dimensional structure responsible for this motion has perplexed anatomists for over 500 years and was considered the Gordian knot of anatomy. The solution to this dilemma was proposed by a Spanish cardiologist and anatomist named Francisco or Paco Torrent Wasp, shown during his early years and during his later years before his recent passing. Torrent Guas proposed a simple solution by demonstrating that the heart muscle architecture was modeled like a single rope that could be folded or wrapped into a figure of eight shape. This configuration explains the observed spiral motion. Paco understood that nature is simple, but realized scientists are complicated. Above is the conical heart, and below is the rope-like model just discussed. Using only hand dissection, the pulmonary artery is detached from the aorta and the musculature is unwrapped. The helical-shaped fibers are encircled by a muscle with mainly horizontal fibers, and the rope unfolds in the same way. Both left and right ventricles are surrounded by these transverse fibers, much like buttresses of classic churches which support the Gothic dome. The muscle contains a central fold that directs the fibers obliquely downward toward the cardiac apex. The apical vortex is unwrapped to show an apical loop until the unfolded heart looks like a string of rope as shown here. This animation is brought to life. Note how the pulmonary artery is removed from the aorta. Following this, the external basal loop is unwrapped to expose the cone configuration which contains a helical design. Next, the conical part is separated into outer and inner segments, which, after unwinding, displays how the unwrapped heart looks like a simple rope that is uncoiled. This dissection is now brought to life. The yellow colors show the sequential movements that define normal cardiac motion. This image demonstrates how the external wrap narrows the ventricle while the inner cone twists to eject and then untwists to suction blood that rapidly fills the heart. The three-dimensional exposure of these actions is evident from a topographical view, showing how the base of the heart moves counterclockwise initially as it wraps around the twisting central part, moving in a different direction. Now a three-dimensional view of the apical vortex, where the sequential motion of each segment is demonstrated as the organized cardiac dance continues. Understanding how to approach the change from a healthy heart to an unhealthy one involves three steps. First, normal function and form must be understood. Second, we must appreciate that disease distorts shape and makes function abnormal. Third, we must restore the altered geometry to its normal shape in order to correct the disease. These considerations bring our attention to congestive heart failure, which affects almost 5 million patients in the United States of America. The major problem is that this disease often changes the heart's normal conical shape into a spherical one. The normal heart is shaped like a football, which twists like a spiral pass when thrown. Conversely, the heart failure heart is shaped like a basketball, and this shape is the enemy. The problem is not with the player, but with the ball. 
the surgical job is to change the basketball into a football. From a local perspective, changing shape is the name of the game. These functional comparisons are made by viewing the normal heart first. The natural twisting and untwisting movements are obvious during open heart surgery, where the heart's apex is secured by a device, and the healthy heart with a conical shape twists and untwists in a sequential way from beat to beat. Conversely, these natural movements disappear during congestive heart failure. The heart's shape becomes spherical, and the natural sequential movements are lost and replaced by uncoordinated, constricting, and dilating motions. This contrast is evident during function, where the healthy conical heart displays vigorous shortening and lengthening motions. Disease changes shape as the silhouette widens. The natural shortening and lengthening actions become markedly diminished. Blood leaks backwards as the heart valves become functionally inefficient. The anatomic changes happen when the normal conical heart becomes spherical to alter the normal 60 degree angulation of fibers. Shape widens as there is loss of the apex and the heart develops an unhealthy round form. These changes are made more understandable by comparing the conical football shape of the normal heart in the upper left to the spherical shape that develops when the scar from a heart attack shown in white in the upper right drawing makes the remaining chamber dilate. The surgical approach is to modify heart form with a patch that safely alters shape and convert the upper right basketball into a more normal football shape shown below. This animation of the procedure demonstrates the scar in the white hatches and shows the spherical form. An incision is made into the scar. A surgical stitch is placed at the scar edges. When the surrounding stitch is closed, a neck-like opening is made and the wall changes shape. Sutures are placed around the opening and into the patch. The patch is now slid into place and the cardiac shape shown in the red healthy muscle now regains its conical configuration. The final step is to cover the patch with the scar so that the altered cardiac geometry is now rebuilt into its naturally intended form. This image shows the functional effects of heart failure and the results after restoring ventricular form to normal. On the left, the spherical basketball shape remains circular during function and heart output is less effective. On the right, after this procedure called ventricular restoration, the heart resumes its normal conical shape, the basketball becomes a football, and efficiency returns. With this background in mind, the College Conservatory of Music at the University of Cincinnati welcomes you to its interpretation of the marriage of science and art. Their presentation of the cardiac dance shows healthy and unhealthy hearts in a creative story demonstrating what you've just seen and heard in this preview. The cardiac dance is the twisting, pulsing rhythms of the human heart expressed by dance, music, and multimedia. In scene one, the dancers generate the cardiac form with a segment of fabric. Its spiral configuration creates the joy of harmonic movement. Torrent Guasp's helical design is also the inspiration for the hanging set piece. Scene two begins with a heart attack, which disrupts the form and interrupts the normal twisting and untwisting motion of the heart. This is followed by a progression into heart failure, in which the heart, originally conical like a football, dilates to become round like a basketball, and its function progressively worsens. Scene three demonstrates the tragic impact of such dysfunction on real lives and leads to a decision to rebuild the normal geometric form through surgery. In scene four, the operation transforms the basketball-shaped heart back into a football, enabling the salvation of shape and movement. Scene five documents the renewed joy in resuscitation, the rebuilding of the natural spiral formation restores the excitement of life.
what you are about to see is the cardiac dance. The twisting, pulsing rhythms of the human heart in motion. For 500 years, no one understood the underlying architecture of the heart. Its internal structure was considered to be a Gordian knot, an unsolvable puzzle, until now. What you are about to see is the power of a simple form. The spiral is a recurring formation throughout nature. Recurring, recurring formation. Recurring, recurring formation. From the DNA molecule, global weather systems, all the way up to the stars. The heart is a helix, a spiral in three dimensions. The muscle twists and loops like a rope into a helical structure, forming the left and right cavities of the ventricles. The twisting, pulsing rhythms of the human heart in motion can be understood as a wave of contractions along the muscular band going from the pulmonary artery to the aorta. The impulse has to go from one point to the other. The design of the ventricle is a natural design. It's no different than many of the other spirals of nature, but we've only just discovered it. As the ventricles empty and fill, the muscle moves in a spiral fashion, mirroring the motion patterns that surround all natural forms and actions. Nature is simple. Scientists are complicated. The heart moves through four phases. It narrows, shortens, lengthens, widens. During these movements, it twists by thickening to eject then untwists to lengthen and fill. It narrows, shortens, lengthens, widens. Narrow, 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 narrow. Shorten, 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 lengthen, 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 widen, widen. During these movements, it twists, twists, untwists, twists, untwists, twists, untwists, twists, untwists, untwists, twists, A heart attack happens when a part of the heart dies.
Even if the person survives, all is not well. The heart begins to dilate and stretch to try to compensate for what it has lost. Patients with heart failure, the heart has grown progressively larger and misshapen, and the working part has become more and more fatigued. A normal heart looks like a football, and its motion is like a spiral pass. abnormal heart looks like a basketball. And as it becomes more spherical, the shape cannot twist very well and gets tired easily. Instead of twisting and untwisting normally, it begins to only narrow to eject and only dilate to fill. Narrow to eject. Dilate to fill. Narrow to eject. Dilate to fill. Thank you. 
A heart attack happens when a part of the heart dies. When a part of the heart, part of the heart dies. We can deal with heart failure in a purely geometric way. When a part of the heart, part of the heart dies. Through surgery, the heart is transformed from a basketball back into a football. We return the left ventricle of a dilated heart to its original elliptical shape. This concept of the normal anatomy of the heart and how normality is changed by pathology allows us to go back to normality. understanding of nature grows, we are able to find new ways to heal. If we are on track, this information will help us deal with one of the biggest health hazards in the world, congestive heart failure.
heart is just one of the many spirals of life. renewed.